start recording. Um, I'm pleased to have Gia and Lula here, Lou here with us from the Chancellor's Office. Um, for those of you outside of Cal State Fullerton or Cal State University, the Chancellor's Office is kind of the the, the mothership of the CSUs. Uh, they're here to present on their change management process. So thank you, uh, Gia and Lou, for taking time out to do this for us. And I'll go ahead and turn it over to you. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Good morning. Uh, my name is Lou Sanchez. I'm the change control lead. My coworker is Gia Victor. She's the change control analyst, and together we're a two-person uh, change control department. And uh, we oversee uh, two change advisory boards in the chancellor's office. One is for infrastructure changes, and the other one uh, we have a third-party vendor, uh, Unisys, who's a partner with us that manages uh, servers and certain infrastructure to support our CMS. Uh, system. So there was a need. Uh, I've been with the CO about six years now, and um, due to the diversity and how we're set up and the complexity of some of the changes, we felt the need to have two separate uh, change advisory boards. So um, let's we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm not seeing the slides yet. Have you been able to load those up, uh, Gia? Uh, yes, I am actually presenting on my monitor. Can anybody see my screen, or is it um, loading? It's showing blank right now. Yeah, it shows the presentation is paused. I'll restart. Can anybody see my screen now? I see it. All right. There we go. Yes. It's loading for me, and there it is. Lou, can you see it now? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. All right, so these are some of the things we're going to cover, and we're trying to not make it too boring so you guys aren't snoozing at your desk here. Um, so we talked a little bit of the how we manage the changes at the chancellor's office. We have basically... We identified several types of changes, uh, manager approved or informational pre-approved, meaning uh, routine requests that don't need to go to the normal workflow of approvals. They're uh, a DNS change or pretty much straightforward. There are going to be minimal risk, uh, no impact, no outages. And uh, we review those on a case-by-case -case basis. We have uh, service level agreements with certain campuses when we do um, configuration changes to the PeopleSoft application for CMS. And uh, they have windows that they can submit changes. We try to clump those all together by campus so we're not doing too many changes all at one campus at the same time so there's no impact so nobody steps on each other. Uh, a standard request is basically a standard request that uh, may require some outages that has, we have to give us a, a leeway of a kind of a week uh, for our elder, uh, anybody that may have a task on this change request to review, for the managers to review it and approve it, to allocate resources to it. Uh, sometimes standard changes have to get pushed out. Um, part, of, part of change control is to manage changes, uh, assess risk, and to make sure that, that we're not doing too many of a certain type of change at the same time. And that's, that's where all the, the change advisory board comes around. Everybody... We have representatives from the various departments, infrastructure, information security, and everybody gets a chance to chime in and talk about those. Uh, urgent slash emergency changes, um, those fall into the category, hey, I didn't make it, I wasn't able to present my change request during the uh, time to review over the board, but I really need to get this done. And, but it, ne it needs to be done in the next 48 hours. So those we categorize as urgent. And an emergency change means I need this done right now. Everybody drop what they're doing. I have to get it done. Now, we really try to keep a handle on those because I've worked in some shops where uh, the process was a little loosey-goosey and everything became an emergency change. And uh, at the CO, uh, G and I try to do a good job to kind of uh, really go through some a justification process of submitting an emergency we're submitting an urgent because we don't we want those to be the exception and not the norm. We want everybody to as much as possible follow the process of submitting a standard request 
uh, by the deadline, and everybody has ample opportunity to review it and 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 uh, and do their thing. Uh, the other category that we have sometimes uh, things happen, as we all know. Her, everybody works in IT here. After hours, things happen, and they have to implement something to do or a change to the environment in order to fix a problem. Uh, we acknowledge that that is the case, but we do want to track these things, and we don't want them to get out of hand also. These we identify as after the fact, meaning we will sometimes get a notification in the morning GI that, hey, Lou, hey, Gia, we had to do this last night to correct this problem. This is the reason, and here's my after the fact change request. So uh, we still want to document these, and we've been fortunate that we don't get a lot of these because they know that this is not the way we want to run things. And but we do understand that on day-to-day -day operations, things happen, and you have to implement some kind of change to correct the problem. So th the scope that we that we handle our changes because when you talk about change management or change control, and every in some campuses that run this process or other shops, private or public sector. Their scope can be a little different, but basically what we try to track is hardware changes, software, database, third-party tools, network, and in certain cases, facilities. And facilities can mean telecom or something that's going to have an impact with the user community. And uh, let's go ahead and go to the next slide, please, Gia. So here's kind of, I'm not going to go through every nitty-gritty, but here's a basic workflow. Uh, the planning stage is somebody submits a request for change, and we use the ServiceNow tool. And then we go every every change, no matter what category it's in, goes through a manager review process. The manager review process means even though it's a routine or informational pre-approved, no matter what status it is, we want the manager of that department to be aware of it. Uh, in case something uh, something comes up that we're not aware of, the manager will know about all how his resources are being used and. Uh, plan out effective schedules. So everything goes through a manager review. So the first step is a GNI review. Is the first we check for quality, make sure that it's filled out correctly, that the dates that there's we assess for risk, uh, see if there's a bulletin required to send out. And then we put it in a manager review uh, status. The manager will receive an email that you have a change request to review. And, we, and once he reviews it, uh, assigns the task accordingly, allocates the resources. He goes through a process within ServiceNow and does an electronic manager approve. When he approves the CR, we will get another email saying it's been approved. And the first stage that we put it through is a, a tech review. Now, tech review, we kind of go through multiple stages. The technical review, we meet for infrastructure changes. We meet every Tuesday morning on a conference call at 9 a.m. Now, these are non-CMS-related changes. These are all infrastructure changes. The tech review board consists of uh, people from our data center staff, uh, information security, data warehouse, uh, our database team. We, we have a representative from every group because everybody has uh, a stake in this in case because uh, everybody's world touches each other, so we want to make sure that everybody's aware of all the changes. So the tech review occurs Tuesday mornings at 9 o'clock. We discuss uh, we discuss the schedule. They get a copy of the schedule ahead of time so they know. And by this time, the CRs are the the deadlines are Friday at 12 o'clock prior to the Tuesday. So anything that wants to be considered a standard has to be submitted the Friday before. And uh, once we go through the tech review, everybody's had a chance to talk, discuss. Uh, maybe a task was needed, a network task or something or information security has a question about uh, risk and doing this change. Everything gets discussed in the tech review. And then uh, after that, after that call's done, uh, we put it in a, a cab review status. This is one final opportunity for the entire change advisory board to review this, uh, to say, okay, uh, I approve. Everybody in the department on the cab approves. So uh, the technical review is more to assure technical content of the change request. The CAB reviews make sure that everybody knows that this is happening on this date and we're good with it, and they get a CAB approval. Once uh, This all takes place on the same day on Tuesday. Once we get a CAB approved, uh, everybody's CAB approved, we 
we were what we call in the change control approved. That means, and everybody involved with the CR that has a task, the submitter, the person that's assigned to will get an email that this change request has been change control approved. Please proceed forward. Now, as you can see in the flow chart, in case uh, the things get um, either pushed out or canceled or tech reviewed, uh, um, canceled, they'll get an opportunity to either push out the date or in some cases, if we can't finalize the decision on during the tech review, we may have to call an ECAB, an Emergency Change Advisory Board. So we're not happy with the tech review, uh, with the technical content. There are needs for more conference calls, more discussion, but it needs to get done. That's happened before. So what we do is we put together, we get an agreement for a time and a window, and we have an ECAB and get it discussed, finalized, and approved. And uh, those are done on a case-by-case -case basis when we have ECABs. They're kind of uh, needed. And there are cases where we can't agree on it and things get rejected. So they get rejected, so we cancel them, and then they have to kind of go back to the drawing board and re-talk to the other teams and get their, all their due, do their, all their due diligence and make sure everything's done. Once it's completed, they implement it. Uh, we get, and then we find out if it's successful. If it's not successful, we periodically have to conduct a, uh, a post-implementation review. And right now, the post-implementation review, we use it to discuss any failed changes or changes where the due dates come and gone and it hasn't been closed out. So periodically, after our tech review, we'll have another quick meeting to discuss changes that have failed or that have not been closed out and try to find out why. And just to keep everybody honest with the housekeeping within um, the service now and making sure that the, all the changes are, are modified. Okay, go ahead, next slide, Gia. Does anybody have any questions up to now? I've kind of been rambling. Is everybody good so far? One question, who are the members on your ECAB? Is it like cross-functional representation, and at what level are they representing? Um, on the ECAB, it's uh, usually, if it's, uh, it's based on the change, it's the, obviously the submitter, the person has been assigned to, uh, the manager of the, our data center staff, we don't have like a designated ECAB group. It's going to be mostly people that were involved, that are going to be involved with the change, that have been assigned a task, and uh, that we feel sometimes, even though it's not noted in there, if GI, GI uh, or I think that there may be some ramifications involving either information security or another department, even though they don't have a task, we invite them to the ECAB. So it's kind of an ad hoc thing right now. We don't have a designated group per se, but we assess the the CR that has to go through an ECAB, and we invite the people that we feel that is appropriate. Great, thank you. Sure. Hey Lou, this is Mitch. I have a quick question. So I'm looking sure. at a change model here. Is this the change model just for standard changes, or are these for all changes? All, all changes, in my opinion. Everything. Everything. Uh, well, informationals. Uh, don't go through every single, they go through manager review, Mitch, but not through the tech review. But standard, urgent, and emergencies will have to go through some kind of cab, whether uh, emergencies probably won't go through a formalized uh, tech review, just a straight cab. But uh, fortunately, we don't get too many of those. So for the most part, I would say 90, 95% of our changes go through this, pro through this workflow of tech review. Uh, the informationals will not uh, but they, they will be reviewed by the manager. Everything gets reviewed by a manager at some point. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's that's helpful. We struggle a little bit with a, how to define our standard changes, so this is very helpful. Thank you. Okay, great. Okay, uh, I think we're done with this slide, right, Gia? Yep. Okay. Um, this is a quick uh, overview uh, on our workflow for the CMS side. On, for CMS changes, the, we have a JCAB. JCAB stands for Joint Change Advisory Board. So we have representation from our partner, Unisys, and representation from our CMS team, Chad Woods, uh, DBAs like Ken Bowie, different people that strictly support on the CMS side. And every now and then we'll need to call in our information security team if there's uh, uh, some kind of... Uh, change that is involving information security. And so their process is they submit the CR. Uh, we, we go through the normal review. 
We meet on Wednesdays at 1 p.m. Because uh, uh, a lot of the staff in Unisys, they're on India time, so we had to come up with a, a, a time that's good, helpful uh, for everybody. And it goes through the review process. Uh, we have the JCAB if it's uh, – we also do go through the implementation of the change. Was the change successful? And then we close out to CR. It's a little straightforward. Now, where it gets confusing because we, we have change requests that we submit to Unisys to process. So we go through a process of creating our, our request, uh, signing onto a portal on the Unisys side, implementing the information, the nature of the – uh, the change request, submitting it to Unisys, they reply back with a their change request number, and so on the same hand, Unisys submits changes to be processed on our side. They will email us and um, their request. We will enter it in our system, reply back with our uh, service now ticket. So it gets a little bit involved because we want to make sure that both worlds knows what's going on. So a lot, all these tickets, we have a field in service, our ServiceNow ticket that we could put in uh, the Unisys tracking number. So when you see that field out that you know that they are aware of it and that we're aware of it. And then it gets a little bit complex sometimes because there are requests that we submit to Unisys, but they're on the hook to submit uh, the change request to us. And again, they have after the facts, they submit after the facts. Uh, we submit daily informationals to them uh, for the uh, uh, changes that we are doing to the PeopleSoft application on a daily basis based on campus. Every day of the week, there's there's uh, three to four campuses that, that apply their modifications to their uh, Fullerton, I believe it's Fridays. Mitch, in case you didn't know that. <laughs> Good to know. Thanks. Uh, Long Beach, <laughs> yeah, Long Beach and Fullerton is uh, Fridays as far as I, I think that's the schedule. And so... Um, we're hoping down the road on our wish list that I'll be talking about later is to uh, implement some kind of B2B automation where uh, upon them submitting a change request to our system, our system will auto-generate a CR and auto reply back with a number. They kind of have something in place now. When we sign on to a web portal for Unisys and we uh, put in our PDF attachment, we get an auto-reply with their tracking number. So we're hoping to do something um, similar uh, to that. Um, okay, any questions on this slide? All right, Jay, let's go ahead and move on. So I'm going to talk a little bit of what we used to do. Uh, we used to track things on SharePoint uh, with workflows and very, very manual, very painful uh, spreadsheet. Uh, walk around sometimes and get signatures. Uh, it was very hard to keep track of all the data and, and it was just very, very cumbersome to use. And so, um, in fact, I think the next slide shows some of our, uh, the next slide shows the samples, some of the samples. So here are some of the old CRs that we still have there. Uh, and this is, kind of, it was kind of uh, busy to look at. And so uh, when I came on board, we were on uh, Remedy, and shortly after that, we were converting over the service now. So now we have w built-in workflows, built-in notifications. Uh, it's much, it's much easier to use now uh, with the service now tool. And uh, at this point, I'm going to kick it off to my coworker Gia, who's going to talk about what we're doing now and where we're trying to head in the future. All right, thanks, Lou. Thank you. All right, so basically, um, I didn't get a chance to experience this past um, process that Lou was saying that was cumbersome. I believe what was happening before is that you need to upload um, this file, this Word document, and then uh, manually put in the information, and then sometimes you have to print it out and ask for a signature just to get it um, validated and uh, reviewed by the managers. So what we currently have now is um, ServiceNow, and it's, as Lua mentioned, it's become more mature as templates have been av available, workflows are currently in place, um, there's approval process being integrated with a tool wherein, let's say, a change has been submitted and it would require a manager approval. 
the there would be an email automation that would get sent out to the manager and um, the manager can just log into service now and approve the change and it would move on to the next um, process and it basically was an enterprise approach to change management because if you would remember this slide from our CMS um, workflow there is an internal change process that happens within CMS and the campuses in which they test out the changes that they make. So uh, just to give you an overview, the campuses test out their changes in their development or test servers and then once they're ready with their changes they submit that over to the CMS team who then um, schedules it and makes sure that everything is good. So basically that's the internal ch CMS change process that happens even before we submit the change request and I believe those are being tracked via incident and then once they're ready that's the only time it goes into change management and we are informed about it. So it kind of has like that incident um, change tracking in which uh, two tickets are linked to each other. So I can give you a quick demo on what happened in ServiceNow just to give you guys an idea. Just let me know once you're able to see my screen. It says it's paused again. Paused. Oh, okay, I'll just restart. Can anybody see my screen now? I can see it, yeah. All right, thanks. So basically this is um, the ServiceNow tool that we use and I basically added my favorites just to uh, make my work easier. We, we do manage just like what Lou mentioned, we have a JCAB review board that this is the one that we have with Unisys and um, basically these are the standard changes that we need to talk about for next week. So um, they have been good in sending out change requests early on and making sure that everybody has their own um, slot and schedule on their plan start date, plan end date, who's requested by and which is which group is it assigned to. So if I would open one change, there you have all the information that you have for the request and what Lou was mentioning earlier is that we, ha we also track, um, we have a separate vendor number or Unisys ticket number that's tied up to our change request. So this is our CSU change request and this is the Unisys change request. And then um, it also includes the tasks that need to be done as well as the approvers, basically the requested approvers, wherein they get an email and um, once they get that, they, they have a chance to review and approve. And if not, just put in their comments or maybe uh, talk about that on the JCAB. And, see what, what things need to be sorted out, if it's a scheduling, if it's a task, if it's a bulletin or any of that. So, for this one, this doesn't have an incident tied to it, so this is just a standard change. Now for the CO one, this is uh, Chancellor's Office changes, pretty much similar to our CMS changes, it's just that we basically don't have any vendor number because this is an internal CO change. Um, it pretty much is the same. It has its own change number, its information. We, okay, client start date and it's currently in TRB review. We also um, basically send out notifications or bulletin notifications if we have outage requirements, but for this one it's um, currently on a no. And for the approvers, yes, if you would take a look at the workflow activity, so Greg Lucia is the manager of the requester, so he has already approved it, and then he's already approved it for the TRB review, which is going to be happening on Tuesday. Basically, even though the manager has already approved this one in service now, we still do our Tuesday reviews just to um, get a feel with the different departments in our team that 
you know, might be affected of the change or, or any, any questions or any tasks related to this change, because if you would take a look, there's quite a number of tasks, and it's assigned to different people, and just to make sure that everybody's aware of the change and everything is scheduled. Any questions so far? Okay, I'll go back to my slide. So we, although we have moved on to this type of tool, we still have a few pain points in um, a lot of the times, well, first and foremost, there's um, user buy-in feedback. Um, I, I believe, I'm not sure if Lou is still, still on the call, but there was a time wherein um, people were prefer preferring a different tool rather than ServiceNow in order to track changes or create incidents. So there there was at a point um, a, a hard time in trying to get the users going to ServiceNow and use that tool in order to create changes. And then another pain point is multiple approvals for one manager. If you would take a look, if you would remember my previous screen, So basically, once the change is moved to manager review, Greg approves it, and then once we move it to the workflow of technical review board, Greg still gets um, an email, and basically he can get up to three emails just to get one change approved. So that's one of the things that we were planning to improve, that process that we want to improve in our change management. And then, one of the other things that we noticed is that fields in the form are not being utilized. Uh, there's really just too much information on the change record that a lot of the things are not um, used because I believe this is one generic form that we use for both the CMS and the CO and some mm -hmm. items are not really needed in the CO change. Some are needed in the CMS change. So that's the reason behind it. Hey, Jay, can I go back real quick to a sure. to a, um, or a question I had earlier? I just a little bit uh, need a little more clarification if you sure. don't mind. So your standard changes versus your normal changes. Your standard changes okay. are still requiring a manager to review and approve it, but once they approve it, then it it skips the TRC and CAB reviews. If it's a standard change, um, it first goes through a manager review and yep. then it goes to a technical review. So I'm talking like routine, like standard change, it being like, you know, where it's low risk, um, you know, um, no outage, um, you know, a routine kind of change. Uh, I think it's because we, we uh, categorize our changes differently. Our standard changes, I believe, are normal changes in um, the ITO world. Yeah, well, right, uh -huh. right. So, so let's just say, let's just say for, so we're on the same page, uh, okay. you know, like a, like a, um, a routine change or we call them pre-approved just so people know of the language. Mm -hmm. They're just low mm -hmm. risk, you know, um, those kinds of changes done all the time. So. Yeah, with the pre-approved changes, this just goes through the manager review and then it goes straight to implementation. It doesn't okay. go through regular TRB review. But you are requiring a manager to actually approve it, not not auto approve. Um, yes. Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yes. Yeah. We we just wanted to make sure that the manager's aware of it, you know, at some point that um, it gets documented and somebody is aware of it and not just, you know, automatically <laughs> just have it implemented in production. Sure, sure, of course. And yeah, one of the last points is just uh the manual input of the CR for the CMS change management process. That's what Lou has been mentioning in that when we receive a change request from Unisys, we have to manually input that into ServiceNow. And then when we have an internal CMS change that we need Unisys to implement, we create a manual ticket to Unisys in their portal. So all of that tracking on the CR numbers um, we are uh, kind of like a manual process and sometimes uh, user user error is um, quite often an issue in this particular process. So moving on to the future, what we really plan to do is um, have a streamline of the workflows and basically reut reutilize different workflows for different processes because 
we manage to, and each of those two change processes have different workflows and individual workflows that work across um, the system. We also plan on having an easier approval process, like I said. If, if it's a standard or a normal change, it, the manager would have to approve the change for about two or three times for one change request. So we're actually uh, thinking of ways on how we can improve that and also hence the reason why we're also sharing this with you guys is, you know, to get some user feedback and um, information from you guys if there's any if, that you want to share with your change process. Also another one is um, we wanted uh, more focus on the post-implementation review because as you can see, we only do that for um, changes that haven't been closed out for the due dates that have Come, come and gone. And then what we mentioned er earlier again is the B2B integration for CMS change management. So we, 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 we do want to eliminate that manual intervention because I believe we currently have the process for incident where in once you log a ticket to service now internally within CO there is an there is a corresponding Unisys number being associated against it. So that's due to the B2B integration. And we would we wanted to utilize that technology to move over to change management and avoid the manual entry of the change records as well. And lastly, the focus on automation. Uh, basically, just uh, continuous improvement on the system and see in which areas we can automate just to avoid a manual interven intervention. And that's it from our end. And do you guys have any questions, feedback? And if you want to contact us, here's our email at cmschangecontrol at calstate.edu. So thanks, everyone. Thank you, Gia. Does uh, anybody have a uh, question for her? Or as you know, she alluded to, any advice or things that you guys do that you find um, to work really well for your institutions? Um, this is Alex. Um, I don't have any feedback or uh, any questions. I just wanted to say thank you. I am um, not very involved in our change, our change control for our campus, um, as I do other things instead. But um, thank you for sharing, and that was very uh, insightful. Thank you, Alex. Hi, this is Melanie Douglas. Um, I was unable to view the presentation. I was wondering if you'd be able to share it with Mitch so he could send it out to the group. I'm actually recording it right now, so um, it'll record the not just our conversation, obviously, but the the presentation. So I'll bundle that up, and I'll, I'll make sure you get a link to it. Great, thank you so sure, much. Sure, of course. Oh, yeah, I have a couple things that we do that you know may be of interest to you, uh, and couple and 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 some direction that we're going in in mm -hmm. the near future. Um, so things we do is we do for standard changes, uh, routine changes, mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. we have them pre-approved. So as long as they've been um, implemented once as a minor change, then successfully um, they've gone through that process, then they can they can get be reviewed for uh, pre-approved. So okay. those pre-approved are automatically approved by the system. They still have to document Hi. that a change was done, but we allow pre-approval. So. It doesn't require uh, a manager approval anymore, and it just no. goes through the regular. Oh, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we also we use do the, the we do the same thing at UCSD. It's a one-time change manager approval for standard pre-approved changes, mm -hmm. and then um, the staff can use them at any time. Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, we actually have that for CMS for informationals. It's just for the CO changes. I think um, we just want an extra layer of um, checking just so we make sure. But for CMS, we kind of do the same for the informational. Yeah. I mean, obviously, Melanie can test as well. It, it does, <laughs> does not, it does, uh, it also has its drawbacks, right? People yeah. gaming the system or, you know, like, no, 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 <laughs> you know, so. Um, and the other thing that we are um, planning to do is, um, and we're working on it as a project right now, is to use um, in ServiceNow the outage record to um, automatically send out notifications of when a plan outage ah. starts and ends. Uh, so we're trying to automate some of the notifications through the use mm -hmm. of the outage record and then the change record as well. So I'll let you know how that turns out, but a lot of people are excited about that. So 
Yeah, that sounds really good too. Because、um, we actually have to do、uh, to create manual outage schedules and then input that into our Nagio system that does the notification.、Mm, okay. <laughs> so okay. so it, it it there's a lot of back and forth in that as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, ServiceNow is you know we're also looking at、uh, subscriptions. So if someone subscribes to、um, The、uh, the a record like either with their knowledge or you know we're using knowledge for that but because each record the outage record will create a knowledge that would be the the information itself、mm-hmm. but anyway using service now to push out notification whether it's email or、um, SMS subscription based so yeah that's that's kind of our two things that we're working on right now but we do we have implemented the pre-approved and we've streamlined the form and I'd be happy to kind of show you our form、um, and、mm-hmm. you know offline send you that because we were having the same thing where people weren't using all the fields and if a field's on your form that's not being used it's <laughs>、yeah. really useful right so, yeah. yeah that's true I believe it's because、um, they were in the process of moving out from remedy as quickly as possible just forklift right <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah I get it yeah yeah so. So、that's really all I have that we we're doing that's、uh, might be worth mentioning. So, anybody else have any uh, uh, advice, suggestions, or questions for Gia before we we、uh, we end this conversation? Yeah, this is Peter Mosinskis at Channel Islands.、Uh, nice job on the presentation. It's、um, I thought it was well done in terms of the process. It, very similar to I think what we're doing overall.、Um, I know、um, Asha, one of our、um, Project managers and、uh, our service management specialist, who's helping us to start up our、uh, a more formalized service management program at Channel Islands, may have some some other thoughts about it. But、uh, no, look great. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, I can only speak for me, but you know anybody that's on the call today or your colleagues want to reach out and、uh, just you know touch bases with me,、um, I'm happy to share some of the things that I've learned and some of the things we're doing. And you know if I had a magic wand, these are some of the things I would do.、Uh, you know I'm always here for a research resource for you guys. So, all right, anybody else have anything before we we end the call? I just want to say that if you're ever looking for、um, To re- to view a, a webinar recording,、um, I post these、um, and then other webinars that I help out with other various groups I'm involved with on the Educause Wiki, the ITSM Wiki page.、Um, and what I'll do is I'll send a link to that to you guys. And there's a lot of great recordings on there、uh, for you guys to peruse.、Um, so, thanks right, for anything else. Thanks for doing that.、Um, yeah. I was actually looking at the、uh, the presentation by RIT. Yes, which was great. Really, really Holy great. Holy cow, that was that was awesome. Was I got、really、feedback、great. like that was one of the best presentations they've ever attended, and that's it was a very very good presentation. So check that out when I send out the、uh, the link. So okay, well thank you everybody.、Uh, have a good Friday. Thanks everybody. Bye. Thank you. Thank、Bye-bye. you everyone. Bye.